Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for, for joining us for Left Think Books presents science professor and author, Dr. Kate Bieberdorf, who will discuss her new books, Kate the Chemist, the awesome book of edible experiments for kids, and Kate the Chemist, the birthday blast off. And how appropriate that today is both books' birthdays. We are uh, Left Bank Books is St. Louis's oldest independent bookstore. We would like to thank all of our supporters, the supporters of Kate the Chemist, and everyone for their outpouring of love for our bookstore. Left Bank Books offers curbside pickup and delivery to anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world even. We are so happy to be able to bring our event series virtual. We believe that events are a way to expand your mind and bring in new thoughts to make the world a better place. And this is such a perfect book to do that. We hope that you enjoy this event and we hope that you support Left Bank Books by purchasing a copy for you or for any of your friends at left-bank.com. Purchasing a copy of the book from Left Bank Books allows us to keep our bookstore and staff operating and it allows us to keep this event series going. So thank you for your support. I'm Shane Mullen, I'm the events coordinator for Left Bank Books. I will be joined later in the program by Cliff Helm, our children's specialist. We will be taking questions from you, the audience, at the end of the event. So you can type your questions as a comment at any point in time. Be sure to tell us where you're coming from, how excited you are, what your favorite food is, anything. You can comment anything you want to. Be sure to follow Left Bank Books on Facebook and YouTube to be notified about all of our fantastic virtual events. Our May and June are packed with fantastic events for readers of all ages. And now about today's books. About Kate the Chemist, the awesome book of edible experiments for kids. 25 incredible and edible science experiments to get kids excited about science. Did you know that all cooking is really chemistry and that chocolate chip cookies will look and taste completely different if you swap out baking powder for baking soda or swap out brown sugar for white sugar? In this cookbook packed with 25 edible science experiments, kid recipes, science experiment recipes kids can do in their own kitchen, chemistry, chemistry professor and science entertainer Kate the Chemist introduces young scientists to the fascinating world of STEM and cooking. You can make your own chocolate covered pretzels, rainbow pasta, ice cream pretzel bites, and more. And each recipe includes step-by-step -step instructions, an ingredient list, full color photographs, a messiness factor rating, my favorite, and a note from Kate explaining the science behind each delicious treat. And about the other book that we're talking about today, Kate the Chemist, The Birthday Blast Off. This is the fourth installment of the Kate the Chemist fiction series that shows kids that everyone can be a scientist. This is perfect for fans of the Girls Who Code series. When Kate's brother Liam is having a science-themed birthday party the very same day that the science club in Kate's school is planning a special rocket launch experiment, Kate isn't sure how she'll manage to do it all. Be a great big sister and a great science club member. But with a little help from chemistry and her friends, Kate figures out a way to be in two places at once. That is, until she is late to pick up the ice cream cake, which means Liam won't have a birthday cake for his party. Will science be able to save the day? From Kate the Chemist, chemistry professor and science entertainer as seen on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, the Wendy Williams Show and the Today Show comes a clever and fun middle grade series that is the perfect introduction to STEM for young readers. And it has a make your own rocket experiment inside. And now about the fabulous Dr. Kate, Kate Bieberdorf, also known as Kate the Chemist by her fans. She is a science professor at UT Austin by day and a science superhero by night. And she does that by day too. Kate travels the country building a STEM army of kids who love science as much as she does. You can often find her breathing fire or making slime, always in her lab coat and goggles. You can find Kate on Instagram and Facebook at Kate the Chemist, on Twitter at K8, the number eight, the chemist, and online at katethechemist.com. And now, without further ado, I'm so happy and proud to welcome Kate the Chemist for Left Bank Books. If everyone at home would help and just give a giant round of applause, make sure that everyone hears you and so that Kate can hear you. Hello. Hi. 
Oh my goodness. Thank you for that introduction. When I start traveling again, please come with me. That was amazing. <laughs> um, but hi to everybody in St. Louis and the extended area. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me on my book birthdays. I am so excited to be here. I was sharing with Shane earlier that my husband is actually from St. Louis. So I've spent a lot of time over the last 12 years in St. Louis. Um, I realized that the bookstore is right near the St. Louis Zoo, which we go to all the time. One of my books is actually based off of an, an exhibit, the penguin exhibit there, because I love the penguins so much. So I'm so happy to be kicking off my book tour with you all today. So thank you very much for having me. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about my background, tell you guys a little bit about who I am. Um, I have some pictures to show you because I just love pictures. I think it's easier to show you pictures of explosions than try to describe them. Uh, then what I'll do is go through one little quick experiment from the Edible Book of Experiments. Then I'll tell you a little bit about the birthday blast off. We'll check on our experiment. And at the very end, we'll do a Q&A. So I've got a loaded presentation for you all. And I'm so, so, so excited to get started. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click over to my slides. So hopefully you guys can see those. Um, what we can see here is probably one of my best days of my life. This was back in 2018. And I did a huge explosion on the late night for Stephen Colbert. Um, but the thing is, I'm actually from a very small town in Michigan. Never in a million years did I think that I would be doing stuff on TV, meeting celebrities, writing books, like never, ever, ever. So I'm from a town called Kalamazoo, Michigan, which you may or may not have heard of. Um, that's what I looked like as a kid. You can probably see in my eyes that I was absolutely into fire and explosions. My parents should have known from day one that I was going to be trouble. But the reason I'm telling you about this is because of that woman right there. So that is Mrs. Kelly Palsrock, and she was my sophomore chemistry uh, teacher, my, my sophomore year of high school. And so she was amazing. She would run around the classroom. She would light stuff on fire. She was engaged. She was excited. She was just amazing. And ever since I was 15, I knew I, I wanted to be a chemist because of her passion and because of her energy. And so what I've been doing ever since then is pursuing this degree of chemistry, trying to get a career in chemistry, and then just saying yes to whatever sounds like fun. Um, so for example, after I graduated high school, I went to the University of Michigan and got a degree in chemistry and German. The only reason I majored in German is because they gave us money to, money to study abroad. And I was like, okay, I'll go to Germany. That sounds like fun. And after that, I went down to the University of Texas to get my PhD in inorganic chemistry. So what I did is I spent five years developing several different catalysts that were active for the Suzuki Miura cross coupling reaction. Now you're probably like, what? What does that mean? And I wouldn't expect you to know any of those words, but essentially what I did for five years is I took one molecule over here and another molecule over here and I tried to connect them using some other really cool science right there. Um, and so I studied that for five years. I tried to do a really good job. And over time, I eventually graduated. I became Dr. Bieberdorf instead of Mrs. Bieberdorf. And I started working at the University of Texas. So now I'm a professor of chemistry. I'm a professor of instruction is my technical title. And so what I do is I teach general chemistry at college, at a university, and I have two classrooms. There are 500 students in the class. So here's a picture of that. But can you imagine that? Can you imagine having 499 other students in your classroom, just like looking around and taking that in? There's so many students, right? So I bet you can't even find me in here. Let me help you. There I am. So what I do is I teach for a little bit and then I wander around the classroom and I try to talk to as many students as I possibly can because I have 500 students, one class, they all leave and then 500 students come back in. Now you're probably thinking, is that what we did last year over COVID and the pandemic? And no, we did not. So instead for the last year, I actually taught chemistry through a webcam like this. And so that's kind of what my setup looks like right now. I've got a microphone here. I've got hu two huge giant lights shining down at me. I have three monitors that are presented so I can see my slides. I can see you guys. I can see everything that I need to see. Um, and it's been a really interesting year, but we had to get creative to figure out how to teach chemistry through a webcam. Um, but you probably have noticed by now that I have a lot of energy and I have a really hard time standing still. So even though I was teaching for a thousand students per semester, I still had leftover energy. And so I went to my boss and I was like, you've got to give me another project. Like, please give 
give me something to do. I need something to do. And so we came up with the Fun with Chemistry Outreach Program. And what we did is we went out to local Austin schools and we blew stuff up and we tried to make science as fun and exciting and as entertaining as possible. You can see here, Henry has his arms in the air. He was having such a great time. Meanwhile, I'm like, please be careful, Henry. We've got science over here. Um, but we just have so much fun going around. And honestly, one thing led to another. And I started doing excuse me, I started doing science all across the country. So I was doing shows in Newton, Iowa, and Roswell, New Mexico, and New York, and LA, and California, just literally everywhere all across the country, trying to get people excited about science. Well, somebody apparently saw that and thought it was kind of neat. And so they invited me to do my very first national TV appearance. So this was on Pickler and Ben. It's in Nashville. They don't, they don't, they're not on the air anymore, unfortunately, but it was a really nice show and I had so much fun. And so we went for the dress rehearsal and they were like, can you do all Elephant's toothpaste. I was like, sure, I can do elephant's toothpaste. So if you've never seen this experiment before, what you do is you have this really cool um, Erlenmeyer flask. You have hydrogen peroxide in the bottom. It's a liquid. And then you add a catalyst called potassium iodide. And when you do that, the, the catalyst goes in, it hits the solution down there. And as you can see here, it shoots up all the way to the top and it can go really high in the air. So during the dress rehearsal, I had it so it would go about maybe 10 feet in the air. So maybe a little bit higher. And the producers came in, they're like, can we get higher? And I was like, okay, sure. So I just dumped a ton of catalyst in there. And you can see from this picture right there, the hosts are reacting because that thing shot all over the ceiling. It went all over their cameras, all over their lights. It was awesome. Um, they had so much fun. They had to bring this like thing in that was this like, crazy ladder to get it all up the ceiling. It was so much fun. But then Wendy Williams saw that and she was like, can you do that on my show? And I was like, yes, I can. And then Stephen Colbert saw that and he was like, can you do that on my show? And I was like, yes, I can. Um, people just love this experience. It's so much fun. But for this one, this was on late night television. And as far as we know, I believe I'm the very first woman to perform a science experiment on late night television. So I wanted to do a really good job. I wanted to make women scientists look really good. So I obviously tried to get Stephen Colbert to breathe fire, right? We wanted to do is make it as fun as possible. Um, and the segment went really, really well. And so what I did is I was kind of like doing some research. I was hearing feedback from people. I was reading comments on the videos, on the YouTube channels. Um, um, and what I kind of stumbled upon was this one comment that really made me think about some things. And so the comment was, I finally found a role model for my 10 year old self. And it made me think because I was a girl who grew up with Bill Nye. Like I loved Bill Nye. Do you guys know Bill Nye, right? Like Bill, 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 Bill. They would roll the TV into my classroom. They'd put the VHS tape in and we'd watch Bill Nye and he'd do these cool science experiments. And I told you guys, I'm from a really small town. So we didn't always get to see super neat science um, that you guys probably do in St. Louis. So for me, Bill Nye was this way to like bring science into my world. And so I started thinking about how I've always had male science mentors. And after Mrs. Pals Rock in high school, school, I never had a female mentor again after that. And so I started thinking about what I could do with my platform, how I could take advantage of it. And I started coming up with this idea that I refer to as my STEM army. And so essentially what I do now is I go around the country and I collect people as cryptic as it sounds, but I recruit people to try to be part of my STEM army, where we go around and we advocate for science. We say good things about science. We support other scientists, especially if they're female scientists, part of the LGBTQ community, or if they're people color like we want to bring all of our people up support everybody we possibly can especially if they're scientists right so with this idea what we did is i gathered here this picture it was uh 70 different women we all came together um we were anywhere between the ages of like 18 and 30 and we did the set a record for 70 thunder clouds where we shot at this cloud three stories in the air we did it 70 times all together and it was so amazing but I started thinking, I was like, hmm, like this is all older kids, right? These are college students, these are graduate students. So what I need to do is come down into the younger groups. And that's how all of my books started. And so what we did last year is I came out with a big book of experiments, which I'm so excited about. I hope you guys check it out. Um, I had so much fun building it because what we did is several different experiments in there. So we have a bubble snake. I also teach you how to make unicorn glue and make the horn as well. Um, for this picture here, it was the last day of three days of shoots. We 
had all, oh my gosh, it was so long, so much work. We finally got the glue to work because there was something I messed up the hot plate. I didn't turn it on properly. So I finally got it to work. I put it onto the glue, smacked it on my head. And of course the editor liked the picture. So that's what's in the big book of experiments is 25 different experiments you can do at home. And I was so excited because that was picked as one of the Amazon best books of 2020. So we're like, all right, we got to follow it up with something bigger and better. And so that's what comes out today. This new book, it's called the awesome book of edible experiments for kids. And y'all, I had so much fun writing this for you all. So what I did is it was during uh, this like March through May period last year when the pandemic was really bad, right? We didn't know what was going on with COVID. We weren't sure. So everybody was just staying in our house. So what I did is I opened my pantry and for three weeks, I essentially uh, wrote tons and tons of different experiments. And I was like, what can I investigate? So I had some cheese. I had some, some shredded cheese. I had some block cheese. And so I figured out how to make cheese fondue from both of them. And then we looked at the science between the difference of like, why does one take longer to melt? What is it with the preservatives? I also taught y'all how to make bouncy bread balls. And I tell you what yeast is all about. We experiment how yeast works. Um, there's another experiment from that that I'm going to show you today in just a few minutes. But this was just picked as one of the best books of May by Amazon. So I'm so happy about that since the books just came out today. So this was really lovely. But then here's the thing. So again, like you noticed, I have a lot of energy and I like to do stuff with my energy. So I like these hands-on experiments. I like cooking. I like showing you the science of uh, the kitchen. I like blowing things up. So I really like big experiments. But the, the piece that was missing was the stories for, that my sister would like. Like she would want to just sit there in a corner and read these cool books. She wasn't necessarily into breaking things apart and eating them um, like we can with the edible experiments. So that's how this fiction series came about. And so the fiction series is based on a 10-year-old version of myself where I get to go around my neighborhood and use science to solve all of my regular problems. So in the book that just came out, it's called The Birthday Blast Off. And what is in here is we have this story where little Kate has to, well, not has to, but she gets to celebrate her little brother's birthday. And it's a very big deal. I don't want to give anything away, but she's celebrating the birthday and it's really important to her that it goes well. Well, at the same time, this girl right here, Tala, she's in the front. So this is Kate. Okay. Tala just moved to the neighborhood or to the school, however you want to describe it. And she just came in and Kate and Tala immediately bonded because they both really like science. And so what they decided to do was this rocket blast off and they're going to do it at the school, but it turns out it's the exact same day as her little brother's birthday. And so what they're going to try to do is figure out how she can be in two places at once. There's a lot of science needed in order to get around it. And I don't want to give too much away. I'm notorious for doing that. So I'm going to stop myself right there. But Essentially, there's four different books in the series so far. The fifth one, like I said, is based on the penguin exhibit that happens in the St. Louis Zoo. Um, but I'm really excited to share this with you because you're probably like, okay, let's do some uh, some experiments now, right? So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my slideshow so you guys don't need to do that. So we can turn that off and we can just do the big video of me here. And I lost my window of you guys. One second. There you are. Okay, good. We're still there. Um, so what we're going to do now is jump into the experiment first. We're going to give it a couple seconds to sit because it has to sit for a minute. And then I'm going to read a bit of the story. So if you're following along at home, now is the time to grab your materials. So the first thing you're going to need is a couple cups. Okay, I use bowls or these little cups here. You can use cups. You can use bowls. You can use anything you want. Oh, jeez. Almost went flying. Okay, the second thing you're going to need are two apples. You're going to need two lemons. You'll need a way to cut that. So I'm going to use my little apple slicer because I really like that. I'm also going to use a really dull knife. Um, so if you have a parent at home, make sure they're helping you with any of the cutting stuff. And then you'll also need some orange juice and some vinegar. Okay, so I'm going to talk you through everything, so don't worry about like having everything in the same order, but we'll go through this together. So the very first thing we're going to do is grab an apple, okay? You're going to grab your apple, and if you have your apple slicer, if you have an adult to help you cut, this would be the time. What we're doing is looking for eight slices for every apple. So let me see if I can do this. Oh, got it. Okay, there's one. We're going to do this for both apples. Slice your apples. Okay. Now this experiment that we're doing, maybe... 
there we go, is called acidic fruit. Okay, and what happens with this experiment is we're gonna investigate what we can do to treat our apples so that we can pre-cut them so that we can take them to the amusement park or we can put them in our lunchbox or something and make it so they don't brown. Because I don't know about you, but I hate when I pre-cut my apples and then they brown. I love Granny Smith apples with peanut butter, but I like to pre-cut them because I don't wanna be driving around with a knife and you know you can't bring a knife to school. So if you're gonna pre-cut your apples, what is a way to keep them from not browning? So that's what we're investigating here today. So what we're gonna do is take four four apple slices and you're going to put it into each cup or each bowl, whatever it is you're using. Okay. So we have four slices per cup. And again, don't worry if you can't really see them off the off screen. I'll show them to you in just a second here. Alrighty. So now we have our four different cups here. Let's see these. Four different cups. We're going to label them one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, however you want to do it. Just make sure you keep them straight so you know which one is which. And what we're going to do is have four different experiments, if you will, so we can compare them all. So the first one here, this is going to be our control. We're not going to do anything to that. We're just going to see how quickly this apple browns when it's just in my environment like this. The second one, what we're going to do is we're going to add some orange juice to it. Okay. I love orange juice. I don't know about you guys. And the goal is you're just gonna cover the apples with your orange juice. You just wanna submerge them as much as you possibly can, okay, like that. It's about a cup, maybe a half a cup. It just depends on how big and how deep your cup is or your, or your bowl is, whatever you're using, but you'll need about a cup of orange juice, okay? Um, I also have vinegar here. I'm using distilled white vinegar. You can use any type of vinegar you want, but remember the goal is to eat these apples afterwards. So you probably don't wanna put like balsamic vinegar on. Actually, that kind of sounds good. Okay, so you do you, but pick what kind of vinegar you want to use, but use the one that you think tastes the best, okay? And then our last thing we want to investigate is another type of acid, because these are three different types of acids. So we're going to use lemons here. And I'm going to just, let's see, can I cut that there? That'll work. Again, remember, have an adult help you if you're cutting anything. And what you're going to do is take about two lemons-ish. Again, the goal is to just cover the top of the entire apple with the juice. Now I keep saying we're using acid, right? So we have three different acids that we're using here. So let's start at the beginning. What is an acid? An acid is a substance or a molecule or a chemical, however you wanna think about it, that has a pH that is lower than seven. So seven is neutral, that's where water sits, and then something that's acidic is lower than that. And so we have three different acids that we're looking at. Actually, that's enough. Usually I need about two lemons, but I think because we had some small apple pieces, I can get away with one. So that works. As long as your pieces are completely submerged, okay? All right, so now back to acids. So we're looking at two different acids really, but they're in three different forms. So when we're in our orange juice or in our lemon juice, we're looking at citric acid, okay? So citric acid is something that naturally exists in the oranges and your citrus fruit, right? I'm sure you've heard of that before. And that acidic component is actually going to stop the enzymes that are sitting on the apple, and it's gonna stop them from browning. We can also try another acid, which is our vinegar. Now that's your acetic acid. Now we're gonna use this so that we can test it, but I'll be honest with you, I do not really like the taste of vinegar, so that isn't my favorite one. Um, I really like these other two. Okay, so we're gonna push this out out of the way because it takes just a second to go through and react. Let me see if I can push this forward. There we go. Oh no. Hopefully you guys can still see me. Okay, good. Ooh. The cord for my webcam just got pushed off the table and I got a little nervous. Okay, good. So now we have our experiment. We're going to let that sit for just a second. We need maybe three minutes to let it do its thing. And now I'm going to read from you. Okay, so now this is the birthday blast off. This is the fourth book that comes out in this series, like I said. So what I'm going to do is start here um, on this chapter. It's called The Right Stuff. And what I want you to do is kind of listen to how I've worked the science into the text. Because as a chemist, I really want you as students to know the science and learn the science. But I don't want to sit here and give you a textbook and talk to you about chemistry and like have a boring old thing. Like this is what a molecule is. No, nah, none of that, right? That's boring. I want something that's actually enjoyable. So what I do is at the top of every chapter, I give you an, a, I think, a cute little science definition that explains a word that you're going to see later on in here. So for example, for this one, the definition is baking soda, which is a noun. And it's a substance that reacts with acids like vinegar to form carbon dioxide gas. The scientific name for baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3. And when you bake with it, it makes your cookies all soft and fluffy. Science sure can taste good. Ah. All right. So now, at this point in the text, what's happened is Kate and Tala have decided that they definitely want to do rockets for Liam's birthday and at their event, okay? At this point, they're not really aware of the conflict that's going on, so we're not going to jump into that, but I just want to read a little bit about this, okay? All right. 
Well, I think we should do two kinds of rockets, said Tala. After school, we had planted ourselves at the kitchen table. Right away, I had given her a tour of our house, and she had met Liam, Kate's little brother. Steaming mugs of hot chocolate sat in front of us. For Liam's party, you could make double balloon rockets, which is in the big book of experiments. And for chemistry club, I think we should stick to baking soda bottle rockets. After she explained the difference between the two, I told her it sounded like an awesome idea. For the balloon rockets, you need long balloons like the kind for balloon animals and a few other supplies. And she said that when it was done, the rockets would whoosh all over the living room. Dribble stood next to me, sniffing the hot chocolate, his brown eyes hopeful he would get some. I petted him behind his ears. None of this for you, buddy. Bet you can't wait for the balloon rockets. You'll chase them all over barking like mad. Of course, Liam's friends will love it. As if he could understand, Dribble thumped his tail. So now Dribble is the dog, obviously. And I wrote this part after my dog, Betty, which is a 80 pound Rottweiler German Shepherd mix. She's a huge dog and she hates my balloon rockets. When I do them across the living room, they shoot all the way across and she chases them, barks so loud. She does not like them. And so I had to add that little part in the story just in honor of my big girl. Okay, I glanced at Tala as she blew on her hot chocolate. Hey, will you tell me the secret ingredient for the baking soda bottle rocket? She tapped her chin. Hmm, you like figuring things out, right? Oh yeah. With a sly smile, she nodded. So you'll have to figure out the secret yourself. Well, I just solved a mystery, I said. Last month, Ms. Daly came up with an escape room. We were locked in a lounge at school and couldn't get out until we found an image of a deadly virus before this bad guy did. Even though it was nerve wracking, we were able to solve all the puzzles. It was awesome. So that's in reference to book two, The Great Escape. And so in The Great Escape, what happens is Kate and her friends have to go to this chemistry club. Again, I don't wanna say too much because I don't wanna give anything away, but they go into this club and all of a sudden they're in an escape room and it's a science theme escape room and have to go through all these amazing clues in order to get out, which was so much fun to write because I had to come up with all these puzzles and it was so cool. And if you guys like puzzles or escape rooms, you should definitely, definitely check out book two. Tala took a sip of her hot chocolate. Wow, I'm bummed I missed that, but it sounds like you'll have no problem learning the secret ingredient for the bottle rocket. I like the way you think, I said. Then I explained how I was planning on telling Ms. Daly, Ms. Daly is the chemistry club advisor, um, telling Ms. Daly how safe and fun the chemistry club rockets would be. Plus, Ms. Daly had access to almost all the supplies in her lab. It was important to let her know that our plan would be simple-ish and fun and require materials that would be easy to access. I like the way you think too, said Tala. I grabbed one of dad's yellow notepads. I guess we can get started. Tala wrote out all the list of the items we would need for Liam's balloon rockets, and then a list of materials to make the rockets for chemistry club, including empty soda bottles, vinegar, baking soda, a cork, and a rocket base. Then with a big grin on her face, she drew a giant X for the secret material. Is it a stopwatch, I asked, to see how long it takes for the rocket to explode? Well, it's always good to time stuff, but no. A test tube, I asked? No. Orange soda, I asked? Nope. Paint? A dime? A wire? No, 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 she giggled. All right, I'm going to have to think about this. Let's move on to the balloon rockets for Liam's party. And then they go on and they talk all about what's going to happen there. And But again, I, I don't, I'm going to stop because I almost I would give too much away if I continued on to the next paragraph. But I think that's enough because I, we can go jump back to our experiment here. So what I have is our four different pieces here. Um, we've got our complete experiment. Oh, there we go. Let me see if I can pull this all back. There we go. All right, so what we have is our control. Let's start there. So in our five minutes, they've browned a fair amount. Not too much, but you can definitely see the browning on the top right there. See that gross part? This one's definitely brown. All right, so that's our control. This is what it looks like after five minutes. And you all have seen an apple that gets browned before, right? So what's happening here is we've got enzymes on our apples and it's reacting with our oxygen here and it's forming this like really ugly thing. This brown thing is awful. Okay, so now let's look at our vinegar. Oh, this one's my favorite. So vinegar, definitely brown. Okay, you can see that brown part in the center. Oh, there you go. You can absolutely see it there. But what's cool is if you look at the edge, I'll see if I can rotate this and get the camera on the right angle there. But on the edge, you can see there's this like brown strip that forms all the way. Let me get even closer. There you go. So there's this like brown thing that forms on the edge. It's like a really gross brown ring and I don't like it at all. So maybe, oh yeah, you can see it right there too. On the bottom through the liquid, it's almost easier to see that. So the vinegar forms this like weird thing on the edge, which I don't really like. But now let's look at our orange juice ones. Okay, here's the one that was sitting on the top. So it was the most exposed, no browning, 
None. Zero. Let me look at this one. Let me just, just in case, let me just. Mm, it was so good. Oh my God, I love that. That tastes so good. Okay, let's do another one. Here's our lemon one. Also, zero browning whatsoever. So what we saw is with the control, the one that was sitting out here, after five minutes, it had already started to brown, right? That's pretty nasty. Our acid, specifically our acetic acid from the vinegar, kind of stopped the browning a little bit, but it also formed this really gross ring around the outside and it's sitting in vinegar. Like, I don't know about you, but I don't want to eat an apple. It's just sitting in vinegar. That's not me. Now the lemon one definitely worked. Mm. It's, it's good, but it's sour. <laughs> So, okay, that would work. I like that one. It's good, but it has a sour kick because that's just straight lemon. Um, maybe if you diluted it down a little bit so it had more of a lemonade taste, it would probably be better. But my favorite is absolutely apple juice. So if you're a fan like I am where you like to take your apples and pre-cut them, dunk them in apple juice, put them in apple juice, have apple juice nearby. Oh, excuse me, I keep saying apple. Orange juice, put them in orange juice. But the trick is, the fun thing is you can also try apple juice. I got ahead of myself there. And you can also try apple juice. So if you like apple juice, it also has that citric component in there. And so you can try it there as well. So then you've got apples sitting in apple juice. But I like the orange juice specifically. Mmm. It's so good. All right, guys. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for coming. I've had so much fun talking to you all today. We're going to bring Cliff back up here. Oh, I should too. We're going to bring Cliff back up here so we can do a question and answer. But thank you guys so much. I want to answer every question you have. So if it's about science or college or anything, just put it my way, okay? Excellent. This was wonderful. Thank you. I, you're fantastic. Um, <laughs> you have two so far anonymous okay. employees asking questions. Uh, one would like to know what is the messiest recipe Ooh. in the. Oh, in the book? I was going to say, because it depends yes. on which one you're talking about. <laughs> oh, man. Let me look at it. The messiest one. All right, so let's go through a couple of these. So I teach you guys how to make two different kinds of ice cream. That one's really, really fun, but it's messy. Um, I really like, let's see here, what is messy? The hot sauce one can get really messy if you're not careful. The, ooh, I'm gonna go with rainbow pasta. Rainbow pasta is the messiest one because what we do for rainbow pasta is I teach you how to uh, the difference between the, your different flowers. So if you've ever wondered why there's bread flour, cake flour, all purpose flour in rainbow pasta, what we do is we make pasta three different ways. So I show you how to do it with all purpose with bread or cake. And then we also try whole wheat flour. And so we go through everything. And so it is the messiest because I don't know about you, but I only have one mixer bowl for my mixer. So if you're making three different types of pasta, I had to stop every single time and wash my bowl then start over and so that one takes forever just because of dishes but if you have tons of mixing bowls then it's a little bit faster <laughs> Funny. yes as someone who's made pasta and yeah. just to see if it was worth it um it is it's fun ridiculously messy just covered but, but fun <laughs> right exactly <laughs> everywhere it's a party just lean into it throw the flour everywhere and totally enjoy it it's one of my favorite ones and i'm actually doing it on rachel ray next week so if you guys want to see it in action um check that out i think that airs on may 19th Perfect. Yeah. Um, also, mm -hmm. I want to know what is the tastiest <sighs> recipe? I'm is there a chocolate a lover. Thing to stop yeah. yourself. It's a problem. So I really like my chocolate covered pretzels because they're easy. Like it's so quick. You just have to melt the, the chocolate and then you can put it on the pretzels and freeze it really quickly. So it's one I can whip up really quickly. Um, what I love about that is the science in there is we're looking at the different uh, structures of chocolate. So you can look at dark chocolate versus milk chocolate versus white chocolate. And you're going to see a completely dipping melt different melting point for each one. Uh, but I, I got to say that's one of my favorites because you can just melt it really quickly, throw it in the freezer and like 35 minutes later you have these fantastic treats that are you can take anywhere yes yeah, science for snacking right oh I ch oh that's a great title oh i love that <laughs> it's yours my new tiktok thing i'll have to put that on there <laughs> um so i'm curious i, I can tell I just gather that you love science i love science. um is there anything in particular that you're excited about going forward? Something we're on the cusp of, something that I just don't know about because I, I just do books. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, I'm sure you know a lot more than you think you do because we're surrounded by science. Like everything we're looking at, everything we're interacting with is science, it's chemistry. 
But for me, what I'm most excited about is one of the silver linings of this pandemic. And what's happening is all of these scientists are coming together internationally. We are having collaborations with people across the world that we never used to talk to. And now we're using their science and our science to make like science for the world better. And so we're going through many more developments. We're having uh, rapid uh, uh, federal trials, like all these amazing things are just like going through so clinical trials, that's what I was trying to say, are going through so quickly. And so scientists that are involved in any type of the pharmaceutical research are so jazzed about what's going to happen for the next two to three years because we have built these collaborations. Like the the all the bureaucracy has been paved. All that stuff is out of the way. So now we can come together and we are so excited to see. I, honestly, I think it's going to be cancer research that's going to just be jump forward because we've made all these connections. And once we get past where we're at, once we get to a safe place where we can start focusing on other research than COVID, COVID, um, that's going to be the first thing. They're going to take everything we've learned. We're going to apply it to different cancer strains and see what we can do with it. But honestly, I think we're going to have groundbreaking research in the next like three or four years. We're going to hear about it. And then in the next 10 years, we're actually going to be able to do it. Um, hopefully faster than that. Yeah. Uh, hopefully faster. But like that's the usual time scale. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I uh, guess. Yes. It, everything is science, right? Everything. <laughs> Um, so I do have a student's question. Um, how do you make stuff explode? Oh, okay. It depends on what the rules are. Like, what do I have to use? Do I have fire? Do I have liquid nitrogen? Let's see here. What's your um, favorite way to make things explode? Okay, that's a fair one. So I have a new one that I've been doing recently, and it's on TikTok. If you guys are on TikTok, I'm on Kate the Chemist. And so what we do is you take this soda bottle and you fill it with liquid nitrogen. And so let's just pretend it looks like this, okay? So you have your soda bottle, you add liquid nitrogen in there. And this is actually a good representation because you fill it about halfway through, just like the halfway full. And so then what happens is liquid nitrogen actually wants to be in the gas phase. So right here, we're breathing tons and tons of gas molecules. And so the liquid space of the nitrogen wants to go into the gas form of nitrogen. And again, this is gaseous nitrogen. So what happens is when you seal the liquid nitrogen in the bottle, all these liquids are turning into a gas. And so think of the molecules sitting right here here at the top, just punching at that neck, like punching as much as they possibly can on the inside. And eventually when there's enough of them in the gas state, all punching, it breaks. So this plastic right here, this polyethylene terephthalate snaps, it breaks. That's so much pressure builds up that it snaps. And when that happens, if it's in a safe place, you can really do cool stuff. So I'm going to be on Kelly Clarkson in July, and hopefully this is what we're going to be allowed to do. But what happens is we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to set up a little liquid nitrogen explosion. We're going to put it into a huge trash can. Then you fill it with 1,500 ping pong balls. And then when this goes off, so about like you set it, and then about 30 seconds later it goes off, what happens is the trash can shoots like 10 feet into the air. Wow. Then the ping pong balls go everywhere, and you can dance through the ping pong balls. And it's so much fun. And it's just because of vapor pressure. That's all that is. It's just you've got nitrogen that boils, and you are you're allowed to do something really cool with it. It's awesome. That is fantastic. That's awesome. It's very fun. Um, uh, let's see. I have one more question. Yes. What is the funniest recipe in the book? <gasps> the funniest recipe. I'm gonna have to look at the table of contents <laughs> for that. All right. Let me think. Let me think. Funniest. You know what? It might be my dragon cupcakes and my dragon frosting. Um, so I take a lot of inspiration from my very first fiction book, which is Dragons vs. Unicorns. And so it's based off of the musical Dragons vs. Unicorns. And again, I'm not going to tell you who wins, um, <laughs> but I, I really have taken a lot from the dragons and the unicorns piece. So you're going to see that a lot in my book. So I have unicorn glue, I have dragon frosting, I have dragon cupcakes, um, unicorn cookies. And so all of that is just like really fun, messy things. And so dragon cupcakes and dragon frosting are really fun because for the cupcakes, what we're investigating is the best way to actually line your cupcakes. So like, do you want to use a liner? Do you want to use oil? Do you want to use flour? And we investigate all the different ways that you can kind of protect your cupcakes. So you can easily pop them out of the little uh, cupcake holes, if you will. The with the, existence. <laughs> right. I, I know. Right. So you're a baker too. If you're a baker, you know how frustrating that is. If you make muffins or anything like that, um, the cupcake liners work really well, but truthfully, I'm, I'm a go-to girl with the spray on the greasers, like the Pam's, the baker's joy. I love those so much not sponsored by either i feel like i need to say that um but i i love those they're my go-to i just made carrot cake last night or two nights ago and it, it was perfect it came right off had no issues so i really like that 
Um, in dragon frosting, what we do is we investigate the different types of frosting you can make. So a cream tree is one, a little bit of sour cream, or a buttercream frosting. And I talk about the difference between the two and which one's better, which one's worse. Obviously, there's a little bit of personal preference here. Yes. But my favorite thing is that for the first time ever, I'm almost 35, but for the first time ever, I can eat my science experiments. So for 35 years, I've always been like, no, you can't do it. Put your goggles on, put your gloves on. And I was like, enough is enough. I've got to be able to eat my science. Mm -hmm. And so I've just like, I had so much, we ate so much cliff. I can't even tell you it's for perfect. like three weeks straight. It, it was so fun. My husband was like, I don't apply to be an intern. Right. I uh, just call me, come on over here. I'm in St. Louis perfect. enough. Actually, I'll stop by you next time. Perfect. We'll do some more book signings. We'll do some cool stuff. Y'all. If you want any of the books, you guys, please, please, please go to Left Bank Books. They're so Absolutely. amazing. Please, yep. please, please. See, we love selling them. I uh, love learning, but stealthily. With the <laughs> yeah. <story. laughs> it's, yeah, it's fantastic. I uh, I've greatly appreciated it. Science is fun. I also had a science teacher in elementary school who just made it so much fun. It tricked me into thinking that I knew things. <laughs> Could you do? do? And it was, I do. It's, it was it was so much fun. You can do all really cool things with everyday stuff. Mm -hmm. Makes um, the biggest difference to have a good teacher. Yeah. Honestly, like I said earlier, like my high school teacher made my entire difference. And so if I ever heard like a negative comment or I've been at a show where someone in the front row yelled, girls can't do science where I'm doing a presentation. I was like, what? Yes, we can. You know, and so for my for Mrs. Pals Rock, she gave me plenty of confidence. So a comment like that just rolls off my back. Like, I don't have time for the hate, y'all. Don't ever focus on that. Like, haters are going to hate. Focus on the positive. Y'all are wonderful. Doesn't matter if you're a girl, boy, nine binary. If you are a human, you can be a scientist. You can also be whatever you want to do as long as you work really, really hard, do well in school. And then look at this. Like, I'm blowing stuff up all day, every day because I like science. <laughs> That's awesome. Hi, I, Shane. Welcome. Hi. I'm back. I've been here like the whole time. Um, <laughs> speaking of science, disappearing act. Um, <laughs> uh, I didn't realize how lucky I was to have so many like women science teachers growing yeah. up. Like I feel so lucky to have had so many of them. Like I mean, all of the science teachers that I can think of right now. All of them were women, which is really? phenomenal. That is phenomenal. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Good for you. And it looks like we have really great teachers here in the crowd. So hopefully, I don't, I don't know if they're math teachers, science teachers, English teachers, whatever teachers they are. Take everyone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so happy to have them here. Um, someone did ask if you had a show or post videos online, and I did share your Instagram, your Facebook. Uh, I All didn't, of it. Uh, your uh, Twitter yeah. and um, the TikTok. TikTok is new. I just got, we started it in around Thanksgiving, around Christmas. And so if you guys have ideas of what I should do, if you have good explosions, you see, send it my way. I'm still trying to figure out that TikTok thing. So like, help me out. Like, like I love doing big explosions. So I just need to know what to do. So yeah, I'd love to see you guys over there. But honestly, any social media, there's so many cool science experiments out there. And the summer with the summer right around the corner, like look into social media, just put STEM right in there and you'll be able to see so many cool science experiments that you can do at home. And with these, you can eat some of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they go right. Right, right, right. That's true. That's true. That's a good point. Don't always go right. But That's then you can why just they're an do experiment. It again. Yeah. Exactly. And I love that with these things too. It's just like eggs and flour. And so it's it's a small, you know, small risk. So if you need to redo it again, no big deal. It's a couple bucks. You can do it. It's no. okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Kate, it has been such a pleasure to spend this afternoon with you. You are just so like I love your energy. Like so great. Too much um, sometimes. So I'll, I'll take off here. Forty five minutes is good. <laughs> no, I I get to drink one fewer cup of coffee today. That's how much energy you gave me. Uh, <laughs> but it's really such a pleasure to get to celebrate your two book birthdays with you. Um, and to all the audience watching, really thank you for coming. Uh, reminder that the books are available for sale at left-bank.com. I provided links in the comments. Uh, these are great like presents to give to people. I know that I will be giving my nephews and my niece uh, copies of these <laughs> books. Uh, my niece is quite not yet old enough for them. 
but she will be soon. Anybody's old enough for fruit. <laughs> yeah, and everyone's old enough to yeah. eat. <laughs> I don't think she's even at like like solid fruit phase yet. All right, fair. Like, yeah. <laughs> she might be a tattoo. She might be too young. <laughs> Uh, but I hope that we can all go to the zoo sometime very soon because I miss uh, the zoo so much and hope that we get to do that like together the next time you're in town, which will be so much fun. Please, yes, I'll stop by the bookstore. We'll go together. We'll sign some books in front of the penguins. It's a dream. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Shout out to everybody in St. Louis. So much love. And guys, thanks again for hosting me. I've had such a pleasure and I hope you guys do more science. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you. you guys are right. Have a great rest of your day and check out our event calendar. We will see you again really soon. Bye. Bye.